when it comes to the fight against insurance companies, large corporations, and the healthcare industry, injured victims are always the underdog. But that doesn't worry us. At Messon Associates, we're an injury law firm from Philadelphia, and we come to fight. Our clients know that they've got representation with a chip on its shoulder, and it's the same chip that makes Philly the toughest city in the country. Call 215-568-3500 or visit us online at messalaw.com. Messa & Associates, the toughest injury firm in Philadelphia. G-L-E-S Eagles What's good Eagles fans? Welcome back to another edition of Football 24-7 with John McMullen. I'm your guy Tone DeShields the second. All right, Eagles insider, man. Uh you've been having a very eventful past few weeks. I can only imagine the Philadelphia Eagles have given you a lot to write about, a lot to talk about on Burge 365. But before we get into it, JM. Uh, I need the people to smash that like button. I need them to stay subscribed. And if they haven't already, make sure they sit, they subscribe to the Jacob Sports uh, YouTube channel. We appreciate you guys. we got a lot of content flowing on there, so make sure you guys are on the right side of history. Now, Jam, I mentioned that they've been keeping you busy um, for good reasons and not, and not so great reasons. So uh, first and foremost, uh, how are you this evening, my friend? I'm doing well. Good to see you. Happy New Likewise. Year to you. Um, said Happy New Year to the listeners on many platforms, but you know, hopefully, uh, for them, hopefully the Eagles get things figured out pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely. See. That, but that's the thing, right? It's they're a team who has so many questions and not enough answers at this point in the season, where most teams are beginning to essentially solidify who they are, you know, what they want to do, what they want to accomplish, uh, you know, essentially an identity, you know, to sum it all up. But this team losing four of the last five, have they lost sight of who they are? Or are they trying to be something they're not? Uh, what, just Britt, walk me through how you've been processing and digesting the Philadelphia Eagles uh, over the past several weeks. Um, I, I think, you know, in a week to weekly, I, I think it's funny. Everybody acknowledges pretty much that this is a week to week league and you see that all over and you see, you mentioned how other teams are sort of forging an identity. I don't know if that's necessarily true, except for maybe Baltimore, which is probably the one hot team at the right time. Um, but you know, San Francisco got destroyed by Baltimore. Miami got destroyed by Baltimore. Um, everybody, there are no dominant teams in the NFL this year. Uh, the closest to it are, are the Baltimore Ravens and the San Francisco 49ers. And, you know, it's disappointing. The Eagles have taken this step back, but yeah, I'm surprised how many people are just completely bailing ship and assuming this is going to be a one and done playoff team. When the one, you know, even if you want to say, all right, Dallas is probably going to be Washington, you're going to be the five seed, you're going to be at Tampa, at New Orleans, or at Atlanta. I mean, come on. You don't think the Eagles can win that game? Um, I know. mean, we just saw them lose to a Cardinals team, clearly inferior, but they made them look like they dominated them, John. I mean, I, I, look, I, I you know, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm one of those people who are looking at this – I'm I'm a super I, I'm a super bowl or bus guy. That's just that's just how I look at this thing. And you know, when I look at this Philadelphia Eagles team, you know, 
I, I don't want to. I don't, I don't know if I consider a jumping ship, but I just don't view them in the same light as I did pri- early, at least earlier in the season. I mean, when you okay, you okay, you get dominated by the Niners and the Cowboys, whatever it happened. But then you drop the Seahawks game, you barely get by the Giants, you drop the Cardinals game. I mean, not a lot of confidence being instilled here, or a lot, of, not a lot of reason to be confident in this team going into the playoffs right now. Yeah, I I, well, I I get it. I mean, it's not good to lose to the Arizona Cardinals. A unique situation, as you know, with Jonathan Gannon, who probably knows the Eagles better than anybody. So maybe they're a little bit more prepared to deal with the Eagles than most teams, uh, because of the, um, you know, he knows where all the bones are buried, so to speak. So, mm. um, it, it, I'm not trying to say it's a it's a it's a good loss, but you know, remember when they do hit the playoffs, Darius Slay is going to be back. Uh, Zach Cunningham's going to be back. Um, and all of a sudden you start saying, look, they're never, they're not going to have it. They don't have a good defense. They don't have a good defense at all. At all. Uh, that, that, the, the, the issue is getting it from bottom five to middle of the road. Can you do that with Slay and Cunningham? And hopefully we'll find out more about Abonte Maddox, who did not play well um, in his first game since week two. Um, and maybe that explains it. And all of a sudden you don't have uh, Kaylee Ringo and Eli Rex on the field. All of a sudden you don't have Shaq Leonard or Ben Van Sumeren on the field. Um, that's better. Um, how much better again, you know, if you yeah. get, if you get from bottom five to middle of the road, you should be able to win games with this offense. Um, and I think, I think certainly they should, they should even, even a road game, they should beat any of those three teams I mentioned. Um, and then you start talking about you're most likely, uh, going to match up with, um, San Francisco in the second round. And that's much more difficult. That's a, that's a legitimate hurdle, but I'm only speaking to those who said, Oh, it's done. They're one and done. I mean, come on, Tampa Bay, New Orleans, Atlanta, look at their records. You you think they have forged an identity? No, I, I, I understand. I understand, you know, the, the theory that, you know, Tampa Bay, Atlanta, the saints, they're not world beaters at all, but it's hard for me to just believe that the Eagles are just going to go on the road and beat one of those teams. Especially, and I'm more so talking about Tampa Bay. I, that's the main team um, in that in that division that I respect even a little bit. Um, I can't expect the Philadelphia Eagles to go on the road to Tampa Bay and beat an offense that has a streaky Baker Mayfield, Mike Evans, uh, Chris Godwin, um, a decent offensive line, and an uh, Eagles defense that can't even get up the field on third down. I mean, you don't have to be the best team to beat the Philadelphia Eagles. We've seen that, especially in that Seattle game and in the Cardinals game. The, their defensive deficiencies well, we've are all, so we've bad. also seen the Philadelphia Eagles go on the road and beat Tampa Bay like a drum. A twenty-five that's, to eleven. That's true. Um, no, it happened. You're right. You're right. But that maybe, was what week three, week four, week three. Um, it, probably their best overall performance of the season, to be honest. Um, from from both standpoints, from the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Um, certainly the defensive side. Um, so again, yeah, yeah. You want to be scared of those teams by all. You know, but you can be thing. Yeah, you know, you know it, it's afraid, funny. You, but, it's so funny because I think it's more of a ego issue than those teams. You know what I mean? It's when when I talk about those, when I talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and all the and teams that and that you may have to face in a wild card. I'm looking at the Eagles more so as the team that won't play up the par, rather than, rather than the other way around. You know, it's just that that, that defense makes me nervous, John. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, it's funny. I was just looking at a clip that uh, somebody put online about one one of many of James Conner's runs. Um, 
who's a you know better back than probably uh, most people realize. Certainly a more physical back. There aren't a, a lot of guys who break tackles like um, James Conner. But you know, on this one particular play, which is just basically a, a, a pitch to the outside left, you, you got a great uh, uh, pin block by Trey McBride, who's you know mm-hmm. again one of the few true wide tight ends, the old school wide tight ends who can block. Um, you got Shaq Leonard, who's late to his gap. You got, you got, uh, Kaylee Ringo, um, uh, just getting caught in the wrong gap. And again, if things go as planned, they're not even going to be on the field for the playoffs. Um, so sometimes you have to persevere through injuries in the NFL. And sometimes you you do things on purpose. I like to compare it to, you know, baseball managers. You play 162 games. And, you know, sports fans in a a lot of cities have become so NFL-centric. They'll they'll look at every baseball game like it's an individual live-or-die effort. You might have wasted your bullpen two days ago and you don't have guys ready to to bounce back and sometimes you sacrifice to to get right for what's important um down the road and you take a bullet or two i think okay. that the eagles are doing with with slay and and zach cunningham and getting avante maddox back up to speed all of a sudden if Abonte starts playing like Abonte, if Slay's in there, if if Zach Cunningham's in there with Nicholas Morrow, um, again, you don't you don't even have those players on the field, so you're having all this angst about, oh, Ringo didn't get the right gap, and Shaq Leonard's late to his gap, and um, guys are getting pinned down because of a good tight end, and you don't got to play a good tight end usually, good blocking tight end. Um, you don't see many of those. So again, it's a week to week league and I see it because you, you do this every day. I do it every day, but everybody acknowledges it's a week to week league. And yet the same people will, will make these grandiose proclamations on one week. Well, I'm one of them. (laughs) Yeah. I'm one of them, John. I don't appreciate you calling me out like this. I don't appreciate it. I don't, I don't know if you're playing this, but I don't know. I, no, I, I, I resent know. that. I resent the, that. The Arizona Cardinals beat the Philadelphia Eagles. Does anybody really believe Arizona is better than the Eagles? They beat them on one week, and they beat them in the Philadelphia. Problem. But I think that's the problem, right? You have a team that they, they need as – the Eagles need as much winning and positivity as they can get right now. And to drop that game at home – to a team that you know is not on your level. And yet you can't even get out of your own and play up to your own level. You know, I mean, obviously there were a lot of that game. That game had a very unique tone to it. Eagles didn't dominate time of possession. They didn't really have too many opportunities. They got, they scored, they scored a touchdown on defense and um, they were pretty efficient. They pretty much scored, I believe. I, I don't know how many drives they had, but I think they had to score on at least four. They had uh, they had drive uh, five drives, right? They had nine total drives. One doesn't count because it was end of the half, so it was just kneel down. So eight right. total drives. They scored seven times. Um, right. So I mean, they 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 really didn't have. I'm not, the time of possession situation. I can't really kill them for because they didn't. They just they, they had they had limited opportunities, but also the defense couldn't get off the field to create more opportunities for the offense. So, I, you know, going into the playoffs, you know, because you're gonna, you know, I think about, I think about teams like the Lions, um, Niners. You know, you may have to run into two of those teams or one of those teams or whatever, however you hire it may fall, but you there's th- this team has deficiencies that I don't know if they can fix. Cause are you, you said, you know, once they get Slade back, Cunningham back, you know, these guys, I understand what you're saying when you're obviously better when you're healthy, but we kind of saw this team and this defense with those guys. And it wasn't that much better. Was it? No. And I, but it was better. 
it was um again and i'm not look this defense is not good it's not good i'm not looking for good i'm looking for mediocre and mm. if this defense is mediocre um when was the last time they played mediocre to you um, probably before right right you know right around the bye week right around the bye week miami and they certainly yeah they played well against my if you're talking about the games they played well in it's early in the season they played well against tampa they played okay. well uh for a long period against minnesota and then they gave up a bunch of uh, garbage right. points which to me don't doesn't really matter they played well at los angeles yes they did let me ask you this really quickly out of we you seen you've seen this defense Go to work week after week after week after week, and you've seen them try to get it done in various ways. Out of all the versions of this Eagles defense that you've seen this season, and you could pick a game out, pick a half, pick a quarter that stands out to you, which which version of this Eagles defense to you appears to be or could be the most sustainable? And do they have a chance of reaching that pinnacle or that point? No, that was early in the season. I doubt they can get back to that because they wrecked it. And that's one of my biggest criticisms of, of Nick Sirianni. You, you you just kind of mentioned, um, you know, Tampa, they played pretty well defensively. Um, Minnesota, they played pretty well and, again, gave up some garbage points. Um, Washington, for they don't play well against Washington. They played pretty well against the Rams. They played well against the Jets, which is defensively I'm talking about, which mm -hmm. is not really meaningful because the Jets are the Jets. But nonetheless, they played well against the Dolphins. And they that then came week eight, Washington. They played poorly, and they played poorly against Dallas week nine. But in the second half, they didn't give up a lot of points. And, and I bring that up for a reason. Then came the bye week. Now, I was told that they're 8-1 and at the bye. I was told that's when Nick Sirianni first started thinking about a change on defense. And it has since come out. Jeff McClain reported that he took down, he took away third down autonomy at that point. So it checks out. Post bye week. Yeah. So it checks out. Now they played pretty well in Kansas City, but Kansas City struggled, and then the the wheels came off. Buffalo, San Francisco, Dallas, but those are really good teams as well. Um, Seattle is the first Matt Patricia game. You know, baked in improvement because it's Drew Locke, but they gave up to two third and tens late in the game. Uh, Giants baked in improvement um, in Arizona with was the worst game. Even worse, I think Arizona was worse than Buffalo, San Francisco, Dallas. That's how bad they were against Arizona. Mm. Uh, so you mean to tell I, me this th this demotion of Sean Desai has been slowly trickling down since the bye week? Yeah, yeah, and it was a wow. mistake. It was a mistake. Um, why was it why was it a mistake to you? Because it, it it it's panic. It's panic driven. You don't you don't he technically he demoted him at 10 and 3, but he started thinking about it and took away the third down stuff at eight and one, which hasn't improved. They've only gotten worse. Um look, I, I think this team is used, and I wrote about this, has used Jonathan Gannon as a crutch in so many ways to the point that they've hurt themselves with their obsession about it. it the, you needed a scapegoat for losing the Super Bowl. That's fine. Use him as a scapegoat. Then they're using him as a scapegoat for not getting the defensive coordinator they wanted, Vic Bangio, who, by the way, gave up 56 points. I keep telling people this week. Um, 56 spots. So if you think he's the magic cure, think again. Um, and instead of focusing and in, in, in building, it, it seems like they already had the crutch set up. Oh, we didn't get the guy we wanted. Woe was me. I don't like that. 
You know, mm. Sean, Sean, I just ran it down. He was not doing that be- that poorly. Now, granted, the third down stuff looked awful after San Francisco, Dallas, uh, Buffalo. Uh, it was Buffalo first, then San Francisco, Dallas. But again, you're talking about Josh Allen. And by the way, you won the game against Buffalo. Look, I actually wasn't ready to move off of him. Um, look, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not really a fan of mid like in season coaching no, it's changes. Terrible. It's I'm not terrible. a fan of. I'm not a fan of it for one. And it's not. Um, and and for the people, I'm not defending Sean Desai. The defense wasn't good. I'm not trying to defend, but it sends a message of panic. Yes, that and that's what it's about more. So it's not about the move itself. And I don't want people to get too hung up on that. It's not about the move itself because again, it, it's not like he was doing great. So the move. It's it's how they executed the move and even made the move at all. Yeah. That's the problem. Because, I, again, I'm not a fan of in-season coaching changes. To me, it signifies panic. It sends the wrong message to the entire building. I'd much rather go down with the ship than throw somebody overboard. Does that make sense? Yeah. And especially when you're 10 and 3. Come on. That's not the time. Um, so I I think it, it, it sent a message of panic. And here you are trying to 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 write the ship. And a, a lot of ways, you know, this team and where they go from this point forward will be reliant on the talent they have and not not the coaching staff. And and I always say players first. I'm not the first one. It's Jimmy's and Joe's over X's and O's has been around forever. Because players mean more than coaches, even though a lot of fans think coaches can do magic things, and they can't. If you don't have players, you can't win. The Eagles have a lot of good players. And, you know, we know defensively, Hassan Reddick is going to have to show up. Josh Sweat, uh, the guys up front, Jalen Carter, has got to get over this rookie wall. Um, Darius Slay's got to get back. Bradbury's got to play better. Uh, Byers got to play better. Um, it, it's going to be it's going to be talent driven if they make a run uh, because they they've screwed up this defensive thing past you know past the point of no return. Offensively, they're fine. They're just they're you know. People would get mad at me last year, Tom, when I say this is a very simple offense. It's a college-like offense. It's, it's yes, it's predictable. I mean, it yes. was. It, it is a simple offense. I mean, it's yes. just the fact that it matter. I mean, yeah, and it was very successful as a simple, predictable offense because they were getting the football to the right people, making the right decisions, and you know, you know, it was one of the most simple offenses of all time. The Jimmy Johnson Cowboys, who had three running plays, and everybody knew what was coming, and they couldn't stop it because they had the best offensive line in football and Hall of Fame running back, great quarterback, great receiver, couldn't do anything. You know, you can know what's coming. If you execute, um, there's nothing anybody can do about it. Um, so what's the problem in 2023 then? Because I I know you said, so well, I don't think need- there's a huge problem on offense. I I I think people are are wacky with that stuff. I mean, See, again, it to me everything I, I say all the time is about context and fair. You know what what? So the Eagles just sent out their game notes for the week today. Let me get you the sure. current. Uh, current spots of this offense um, as I'm pulling it up. It's eighth overall, um, the offense. Um, It is seventh in points per game. They have the second best third down offense in the NFL. The first, the number one fourth down offense, 10th red zone offense. Is that, what are we talking about? This is a bad offense. Maybe it's bad no, to your I mean, expectations. Not I don't speaking think of you. No, no, no. But I mean, I don't think talent from a talent. I mean, you said it yourself, right? If they get by any any level in the playoffs, it's going to be mainly talent talent driven. Um, and I know you mainly meant that for the defense side of the ball, but 
I'm willing to argue for the offensive side as well because, you know, perfect example, that Cardinals game, I don't think offense was the problem. I don't think offense was the problem at all. They, I, I feel like offense did a pretty good job execute. But then we get to the final offensive drive after the onside kick. And you run a play, holding, okay, you're first and 20. Not a death sentence. You're still across your opponent's 50. Not a death sentence at all. First and 20, you go quarterback draw. Then second and 16, you go quarterback draw. Third and 19, you go bubble screen to Kenny Gainwell. And then you settle for a field goal. Yeah, I think those are the moments. I think those are the moments where people look at this offense and say, that's the problem. That's why they're not where they um, need to be. Because they have these stretches of these moments where the, I guess, play calling or the design, however you want to you know, chop it down, the plays that are being called in that moment don't make sense for the situation. And I think that's why people question this offense right now, especially the, sta the staff. Well, people question it because, you know, the week prior, they convert a third and 20 with A.J. Brown on basically a go route. And the assumption is, well, you can do that all the time. You know, you don't want to be in that situation. Um, you don't want to be first and 20. You certainly don't want to be third and 20. Anytime you get pushed back with a holding call, uh, what you're trying to do on first down is, you know, get a representative seven, eight yards to put you in a position to get back into third manageable. Everybody wants to be third manageable. The right. problem is, the Eagles convert so many third longs over the past two years um, that people have come to expect it. And, you know, late in the game, late in the close game, um, when you're when you're facing third and whatever it was, 19, third and 20 with the bubble screen, you know, the last thing you want to do is is throw an interception and not be able to take the lead or take a sack and get out of field goal range. So, you know, they kicked the field goal and the defense, again, didn't stop Arizona. Um, but that's not a new story. The defense wasn't stopping Arizona all day, right? So, no. well, I, I guess that, in my and mind. Th and that's the bigger issue. Anytime, look. If you get a holding call, you get backed up. Most teams don't convert um, those drives. They don't. Again, I mean, I don't you, think, I mean, you, I, I mean you're definitely not going to convert it doing two quarterback draws back to back in the bubble screen. You definitely well, not convert you it might if the if the, it, it, and it was more the the first one was an RPO, it was more quarterback sweep. But okay, you know if if you know if you get if if you're successful, right. Um, all of a sudden, they get four yards, for instance, on, on the first quarterback run. The second one, they lost four yards. Now, if they gain four yards again, then it's a, even that even yeah. that's a different conversation. Right. Uh, third and 12 is much easier than third and 19 or third and 20. Agreed, 100%. Um, now, because you have, and that's part of the frustration of A.J. Brown, he like, wants the ball in big spots. Um you know, maybe you should go for it. Maybe you should, um, you know, er, stop worrying about being cautious, you know, but they have been bitten a little bit, certainly in the Jets game, most notably. Um, and you want to take the lead. And look, what I, you know, Brian Johnson probably, you know, made a little mistake today in his press conference. Somebody asked him um, about, you know, how the defense affected the way you approached uh, that that sort of uh, drive, and you know he he begged off. I joked Blake Gillikin, the Arizona punter. Uh, you, Eagles fans never got to see him. Didn't have to punt. Didn't need. Didn't need him. Didn't need to dress if he didn't want to. Um, Arizona didn't didn't need him. And Brian Johnson, the defense finally forced a punt from Brian Johnson. He's like, I can't answer that. You know, everybody knows how poorly the defense played. Um, the offense, though, as you pointed, had, didn't play poorly. Um, overall, they had a difficult situation off their 
the onside kick. But overall, again, we're at AJ. AJ's at 1,447 yards. Devontae's over 1,000 yards. Running back for the first time since Shady McCoy, they have back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons. Uh, Jalen Hurts has um, 38 touchdowns. I mean, come on. Offense ain't a problem. Should it be better? You know, yeah, maybe you, you know, maybe some people have to come to come to Jesus when they talk about the simplicity of this offense and the RPO and the college like, well, guess what? You maybe have to have a come to Jesus moment about the quarterback because they mm, play this offense so, because that's what Jalen Hurts does well. But let me ask you this then. It, does have they maxed out this product of an offense? Is that what you're saying? I mean, have they met like how I would like to think or believe there is a much more creative way of executing this offense. I mean, I'm sure you can, I guess, did, again, did, did you have they, a lot, have did they you maxed a this lot thing of out? college football? Cause they're all the freaking same. Every <laughs> single one of them, there's better execution. So yeah, you can execute better. The Eagles need to execute better on those bubble screens. They need to execute better when they're running uh, uh, rub routes, when they get caught on those all the time. They have to execute better. But as far as they're all the same, simple, simple. RPO's RPO. So the quarterback's limitations is holding this team back, not the coaching. I, I, I Look. However you want to say it, they run. You saw in 2021, Nick Sirianni's a, a West Coast guy. Um, his his history. Um, he came in running more of a West Coast offense. How did that go? Two and five, mm-hmm. Flowers. This guy should be fired. They shifted gears. Um. They started running the football, which everybody I'm told in Philadelphia loves. Um, so they why became marry an RPO your, offense? So why and, marry yourself to a quarterback that you know is not does not fit what your coach is trying to do, or or why you or at least his skill set as a head coach, like you said, Nick Sirianni is a <clears> West Coast guy. Why marry yourself well, that, to a quarterback that that um, that's that, not is skill set. The, that is the way the league is going as a whole? Uh, it's not a bad thing. Um, well, what, again, the, the, league, the league is going where the Eagles are. Yeah, I mean there are a lot of <clears throat> that the 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 quarterbacks at the college level are running this type of offense, um, and so you could either bring them in and try to turn them into an old school conventional quarterback, or you can build around their strengths. <laughs> And hopefully, you know, continue to evolve and 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 add some things. But the numbers are the numbers, right? This I understand the numbers. Pretty good. Yes, numerically, sh- sure. Um, but so, all right. If the if the league is going where Jalen Hurts is, and there, you know, you're seeing a lot of these college offenses making this way in the league. Nick Sirianni is a West Coast guy. Clearly, we've seen what that looked like with the two and five start in 2021. And um, they definitely have Jalen throwing the ball more this season. Is Nick Sirianni the right coach for Jalen Hurts then? I mean, if that's not Nick's if if, if where if where the league is going is not is not Nick Sirianni's original school of thought, how can he be the right guy for this quarterback? Well, he's already proven he has shifted his uh, philosophy and built an offense around his quarterback. So I think that's a positive for Nick Sirianni. Um, but wouldn't you, you look couldn't, at, couldn't want to argue that that was Shane Steichen's philosophy because he took over after the two and five start? No, because a he didn't. Um, he took over in the Chargers game, which was. Okay. Um, but B, I mean, it, it's Nick's offense, and yeah, Shane didn't build the offense. Um, uh, it's Nick's offense. It has been in Nick's offense. It will be Nick's offense. That's why I say, if you want to blame Brian Johnson, no, don't go to Brian Johnson. Go right over to the speed bump to Nick Sirianni. If you want to blame somebody for the offense, it's Nick Sirianni's offense. But um, 
he has, you know, he deserves credit for building the offense around the quarterback instead of pounding the square peg in the round hole. If he kind of kept kept going with the same offense at two and five, he didn't. Right. You look at Kevin O'Connell this year, he loses Kirk Cousins, right? He's playing a certain way. Um, more of the Shanahan Kubiak tree, play mm-hmm. action, downfield throws. He gets Josh Dobbs and Jaron Hall. He's still playing play action, trying to throw right. the ball down the field, and they're just atrocious at it. Atrocious at it. That to me is terrible coaching. What what Nick did is he said, you know what? This isn't working. We're putting too much on his plate. Let's scale this thing back. Let's RPO it. Let's do what he he's good at. He deserves credit for that. Sure, definitely. Definitely. And not no, everybody, but- not everybody can do that. Not everybody uh can, but my only point of bringing that up is mm-hmm. It was the same simple, predictable offense last year. Everybody knew what everybody knows what's coming. Everybody. So the players just are just aren't executing at, at the high of a level this year. Is is what you're saying? Well, they're executing at a pretty high level. They have a 1,400 yard receiver. They have a quarterback with 38 touchdowns to be top 10 in every meaningful category. They're they're. They're executing at a pretty high level uh, unless the expectations are out of whack and the expectations are out of whack around here. They're out of whack. Mm -mm. I don't know, but I will say, I will say this though, you know, 18 turnovers by the quarterback is unacceptable. Well, the turnover Um, thing is legit. I mean, the turnover thing is a problem. Um, and that needs to be, and that's just the quarterback, not even the team. That's just the quarterback. 18. Yeah. I mean, well, you have to look at each of them. I I always say, you know, yeah, some of them, one thing I will say about Jalen hurts that he needs to find a way to work on. He gets a lot of his footballs tipped by an edge rusher or at the line of scrimmage and they turn into picks. That's like, that's kind of like his MO and obviously it's not on purpose, but. Yeah. Well, I everybody's know. figured out the bubble screens and they're going to get their arms up. And so you got to be very careful when you're doing that kind of stuff. Look, the Jets interception would be an example of one all on Jalen Hurts. You know, the fumbles, I think, you know, people don't realize when you have when you have a mesh point fumble, doesn't matter um, who it's on whose fault it is the running back or the quarterback it always goes on the quarterback always Mm -hmm. Um, they've had a couple of those yeah sometimes one time it was uh jalen's fault with kenny gainwell uh another time it was i forget it was um deandre swift's fault uh wasn't on jalen but jalen gets responsible for both one time it was his fault one time it wasn't um so that's just part of being a quarterback You know, Dak Prescott went through this last year, and people are piling on saying Dak. His entire history, Dak Prescott, he's been very ball security conscious. Yes. And I said he, and I said before the season to Jody, I said he'll bounce back. He won't turn it over a lot this year. And sure enough, he's bounced back. I feel the same thing about Jalen Hurts. If you look at his history, he's been very, um, very, very safe with the football. And he's got 14 interceptions this year. I don't think that'll continue. Um, Agreed. And and that part I'm not too worried about. A little bit of an anomaly, but they need uh, to certainly, hopefully, stem that tide. And sometimes it's as simple as, you know, there's a little randomness to turnovers, and it, it – it's gone bad for the Eagles last year. Last year it went well um, and it kind of scaled back. Maybe the worm turns and it starts going the Eagles way. You know, John, let's, you know, let's close it with this topic here before we get out of here. Um, thank you for always um, making us available. Um, Eagles fans, make sure you guys smash that like button and make sure you um, are subscribed to the Jacob Sports YouTube channel. Um, before we get out of here, John, uh, I want to get your take on the AJ Brown situation. Um, you know he's he has he hasn't made them he hasn't made himself available over the past. Couple talking weeks. tomorrow, by the way. Just yeah. announced. <laughs> oh, awesome, awesome! It's a, it's a uh, it's a rare sighting. It's like Sasquatch. Um, but 
Uh, no, AJ talks all the time. That's the funniest not, thing. Not, AJ not, is no, very accommodating, uh, right. and that's why it was so um, right. And if and, and and again, I'm I'm glad we're here because I love how you know in the most recent you know encounter, he essentially said, "Look, you know, it's it's not you guys. Just you know, just want to make that clear. You know, it's not you guys at all. Trust me." And you know, I'm curious to know. You know, I'm curious to know. A how how did how did it go over with you guys initially? And then how has it gone over with you guys since he kind of cleared it up with you guys that is not on is not on your guys' end? Well, I think most people who are down there all the time know that uh, AJ doesn't have a problem talking. Like, I mean, AJ is probably the most honest player uh, on the team. Now, a lot of the times um, it's off the record because he doesn't want to say things about um, – I always ask him about opposing corners, for instance, and man, he gives me the legit scouting report on every corner in this league, but he doesn't want to do it on the record. So, of course. you know, to upset, uh, you know, potential bulletin, whatever. Um, he's very honest, very accommodating. Um, and that's why when he didn't want to talk, um, it became, uh, it was so strange, but I, I don't think any reporters took it as an affront. Um, mm. I was more concerned about, because he had some issues in, in Tennessee um, with social media and, 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 you know, sort of Lane Johnson ish type problems. And, <clears throat> you know, I was hoping he was okay, you know, mentally. Uh, and he takes losses hard. Uh, he had mentioned after the Seattle game, he, he basically didn't sleep <clears throat> on the way home. Um, um, so, yeah, I I don't – the AJ stuff, and, and I think what he's going to say tomorrow is, you know, people talk about targets, and I think AJ, and I said this on the show this morning, I'll say it again, it's not about targets. It's about spots. He wants the ball in big spots. And I went to the NBA scorer. You know, you, you you should want the guy who wants to take the last shot. That's what AJ wants. So in high leverage situations, yeah, I bet. I haven't talked to him. Nobody's talked to him. But I bet he was pissed off at that third and 20 situation that we were talking about you know give him a chance give him give him a chance instead of wasting a bubble screen and getting Devonte smith hurt on top of it um and that's my issue my only issue you give your playmakers a chance in a big moment where you you needed in my well, obviously high size 2020 but i felt like instantly the moment they settled for that field goal they were going to lose that game i felt that um but I agree. You know, you got a big moment. Give it to you know, you know, give it to your big line. Um, yeah, I would certainly agree. Throw it up, let him see what he can do. Mm -hmm. In this particular situation, if you had a chance to take the lead, um, and then you look at your defense and say, Hey, stop the Arizona Cardinals once, and they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. So right. um yeah. I, you know, I don't if it were if it were if the Eagles were losing and it was fourth down in 20, you just throw it up and, and see what happens. But in a situation where you can take the lead, I think that's a little bit different. Um, and Jake, Jake Elliott's obviously having a tremendous year. And, you know, remember the Cardinals had to um, burn all their timeouts. To get, so they didn't have a lot of time. That was just a pathetic performance by the defense. So, yeah. I, you you could say the play calling was conservative. That's fine. That's a legitimate uh, uh, complaint. They could have gone in different ways. And anytime something doesn't work, and Brian said that today, yeah, you're going to think about doing the other thing. Um, but, man, I mean, it, it, this is a complimentary game. And the defense didn't didn't carry their water against the Cardinals. At all. Yeah, couldn't agree more. And um we're gonna have some more concerns as the season and the postseason uh you know begins to take shapes. And I don't I don't really see it ending at any point. But nonetheless, 
John, I appreciate you um, always for taking the time out for the show. Um, you do a great job on Burger Street 65, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. with your partner in crime. Uh, Jody Mack, you also do an amazing job with your writing on SI.com, that's Sports Illustrated, and uh, on Jacob Sports as well. Um, so Eagles fans, smash that like button and make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you guys continue to check out John's content as well. He does he does amazing work being the Eagles insider for Jacob Sports. You guys are locked in on Football 24-7 with John McMullen himself. I'm your guy, Tone shows the second, and we'll see you next time. Take care. When it comes to the fight against insurance companies, large corporations, and the healthcare industry, injured victims are always the underdog. But that doesn't worry us. At Metson Associates, we're an injury law firm from Philadelphia, and we come to fight. Our clients know that they've got representation with a chip on its shoulder, and it's the same chip that makes Philly the toughest city in the country. Call 215-568-3500 or visit us online at messalaw.com. Mesa & Associates, the toughest injury firm in Philadelphia.